we're in a more dangerous place now than we were 20 years ago. We can now, from halfway around the planet, take society back 100 years through software. If we ever come to a point where we're actually engaged in full-out cyber war, the future is going to be a arms race. I'm in Manhattan to meet a team of white hat hackers who focus on embedded systems, the unseen components that control devices around us, from tiny gadgets to large-scale tech infrastructure. Red Balloon Security is headed up by Ong Tsui. They recently developed an exploit which allows them to effectively bug embedded devices without physically touching them, exposing sensitive data and leaving them vulnerable to malicious actors. They've worked with everything from printers to monitors to drones, all kinds of machines that we rely on every day, and they're going to show us just how insecure they can be. Hello. Hi, Ang. Um. How are you? Good, how are you doing? Come on yeah, in. Yeah, good, thank you. This is where we do all of our shenanigans. There's my desk, there, that's the data center. This is where we do all of our hardware takedowns. When we look at a new physical device, it's very important for us to understand you know, how that machine is made, what's really inside, what the software is, what the hardware is. And a lot of times, we just take it apart. We take apart dozens of these things. There is a big old bin of phones that didn't make it. Right? These are all ones that you've teared down to try to out on them. Yeah, poor little fillers. It's like a phone graveyard. Ang wanted to show us some hacks they'd done using a piece of malware he affectionately calls Funtenna, which exploits radio frequencies, RF signals, to turn office equipment into bugging devices. So Funtenna is basically using software and all of the uh, common pieces of hardware that you find in, in basically every embedded device to force that hardware to transmit an RF signal to exfiltrate data. Right? So, so that's not, a radio uh, frequency? Over RF, yes. Right? So if we had software that pushed electrons through this wire in a predictable way, then you know, Maxwell's equations say we can Right, induce a magnetic and electric field, and then we're going to get an RF signal that we can receive with you know, all sorts of standard you know, radio receivers, basically using only software. So what we did is basically reconfigure the software control input pin to go to output, so we can actually convince the, the phone that it's really off the hook when it's not off the hook. So you basically placed a bug into a meeting room or wherever the phone is? Sure, uh, through software. Right, so nobody had to sneak into this room, nobody had to tamper with the phone. Uh, it was all just software through the network. And in this case, it was software delivered to this phone through a printer. And we get the exploit to the printer through a resume. So we send you a resume. The resume rewrites the firmware on the printer to do whatever we want. And what we want to do is find all the phones. So that once we find the phones, the printer goes out and exploits all the vulnerable phones, and now we have eyes and ears in every room. Right, let's see what it can do. Okay, so, well, it's been doing it all this time, right? So we're gonna look over there, right? Our entire conversation was, you know, exfiltrated to my laptop. Uh, and I guess I can turn the volume on and we can hear what it sounds like. Okay, okay so, so we're gonna we're talk, talk, right? And there's, there's a, slight a slight delay, delay maybe a little bit of an echo, echo right? But the, the audio, audio quality, quality is actually, actually pretty good. good. And on and later versions of this attack, that we were able to do live speech to text. So, so instead of, you know, sending out all of his audio data, we just had the phone tweet everything that was being said. So you're tweeting out everyone's secrets? Yep, yeah, pretty much. Ong then showed us how the Funtenna software could make a printer spill secrets by leaking information through RF signals. He could pick these up using an antenna. In this case, a cheap AM radio he named after a famous actor. I'm going to show you a really cheap AM radio, right? This guy's called Tom Cruise. Uh, and we're going to see what Tom Cruise will say about Funtenna. Let's do it. All right. We're going to turn on and see if we can. The exploit caused the printer's components to vibrate and transmit the data as if it was Morse code. With a powerful enough antenna, a hacker could intercept the signals from a distance without ever going near the printer. To an AM radio, that's what, that's what it sounds like, a tiny little beacon. So that's the sound of the data that you're extricating? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. There you go. How can you turn that into something usable? Ah, so we'll show you. And this is where this computer does this thing. So what you're looking at here is the, uh, the RF version of Fontana, right? We have the software-defined radio, we have the antenna, we have the printer transmitting over here, right? 
And what's going on is the antenna is piping into this tiny little box, which is being processed on the laptop, and you're seeing the same beep, 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 beep you're hearing the AM radio. And what our software is doing is basically taking these tiny little dots, right, turning it into binary, and then decoding it over here. So the sky above the port was the color of... Television. So it's the first sentence of Neuromancer. Yes, the first sentence of Neuromancer. All right, so basically we can send out whatever data we want from pretty much all sorts of you know, embedded devices that you have all over the place. And ta-da! So say someone was printing off some like sensitive documents. If there was Fontana loaded on that printer, then you could grab that sensitive information using an antenna mm -hmm, yeah. and translate it back into something that you can understand. Yeah, and you know, even more, if somebody was saying something sensitive on the phone, the phone can send that information to the printer and the printer can Fontana it out, right? Or you grab some information on the printer, you can send it to the phone and the phone can Fontana it out, right? It's, um, you know, there's nothing special about this printer that's allowing me to do the Fontana transmission, right? Every embedded device effectively has the same hardware that in theory, can allow me to transmit information out in this way. So we're not just talking kind of office secrets. This could be like military secrets. Right. You know, station. whatever reason you want to build a steel enforced uh, concrete bunker, right? Yeah, yeah. Ong's Fontana hack is clearly pretty advanced. And what makes it particularly impressive is how it can transmit data using radio frequencies. This means it could send stolen information through walls without a hacker ever having to enter the building. It's quite scary to think about all the systems that could fall into the wrong hands. You think about securing your laptop, your phone, you don't necessarily think about all the other devices that hackers could use to break into a network. So we're hearing the Fontana code. This obviously doesn't have a speaker, it doesn't have a microphone, right? We're making this acoustic emanation by effectively causing the passive components to, to vibrate and the solenoid to do whatever it's doing. Sounds like an old school arcade game. Yeah, yeah, kinda, right? 